All right, let's move on to the next question, popular career related question uh, we found on Google. And this one is how could the proximity principle help you find a career you love? And to my ignorance, I actually didn't know exactly what it means. So I looked up what is the proximity principle, which is identifying opportunities to do what you love is as simple as getting around the right people and being in the right places. So Basically, the formula is the right people plus the right places equals to opportunities. I'm going to start with you, Mark. What is your take on that? Do you believe in that? Uh, yeah, so, uh, people um, people kind of call it all kinds of different um, words like, you know, manifestation and, and, and so forth. Um, but really, from my point of view, it's, it's not mysterious. Uh, there are assets in the immediate surroundings that you often overlook because you are in those immediate surroundings. Your your radar, or what the Germans would call your Umwelt, your 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 ability to kind of pick up on the signals, the indicators, and the assets uh, in your immediate surroundings often aren't that good because your immediate surroundings are used for your kind of basic so day to day survival. So how do you notice? How do you really notice? There's this really important asset of a of a person or a company or or a or a job opening unless you actually turn that radar on and turn your whole community on to that radar by speaking in your out loud voice to everybody look here's what i'm looking for in in my career here's the job i'm going for here's my dream here's what i want because now everybody's got their radar on everybody is seeking for you and on your behalf and if the assets are out there they will be drawn towards you they will be pushed towards you now will this be a mysterious thing where it just kind of transmutes through space no somebody will come up to you and say hey you know you were t i remember you were talking about that thing well my next door neighbor uh, they've got their 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 cousin has a company that and it may at that point sat, seem very mysterious but it's just the, the laws of the laws of proximity, uh, essentially, and we miss out because it's so immediate. We can't we can't see the wood for the trees. Let's 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 put it like that. Uh, Michael, what's your view on this? Yeah, I agree. And I, I think the biggest problem with people when they think about the proximity principles, they begin to believe that well, I have to be in the right proximity for it to matter. I have to be with the the well healed or the well connected. But what Mark said at the beginning of uh, of his answer was very key. It's out there. You've got to send the signals out. Um, uh, a friend of ours, Dory Clark, has said, every day you get a chance, talk to somebody you wouldn't normally talk to. You know, reach out, ask questions, be open, engage. You won't always get engagement from everyone, but no matter where your proximity is, there's somebody there. You know, unless you're literally living by yourself in a hut in Antarctica, there's somebody there, right? Even if it's not Manhattan, you're not working at Goldman Sachs, but you're in you know, Iowa City and you're, you know, you're working at, at the Piggly Wiggly, there's still somebody there. There are some people. So reach out, connect. Somebody knows somebody knows somebody else. And if you're that person and you're willing to have ambiguous conversations and just say, I don't know where this is going to go. I appreciate you taking the time. Then people will introduce you to more people and you will make those connections. I mean, we've seen the research on, you know, proximity. Like if you know, we used to look back at, um, at at grade schools. They looked at people and who were their best friends throughout life. A lot of times it was people they sat that had a, a similar last name to them because they sat in alphabetical order. I mean, the, your proximity will determine a lot of things. And so you can focus on putting yourself in better proximity, and that's not a bad strategy, but make sure that you know how to work with what's in the immediate proximity you have. That is more important because you can be in the midst of amazing people. And if you're not willing to reach out and ask questions, uh, here, here's an example. I was in, <clears throat> I was in a hotel bar in Copenhagen a week ago. And a good friend of mine, Mark, you know, Cal had come over yeah. surprise to meet my wife and I just for one night, we had dinner and we ended up back in the hotel bar having a drink. And this young man was standing there. He just said hello and started talking. Well, it turns out Joe is a, an ex footballer. And he now is doing some coaching work and he was starting, you know, and so Cal just asked him questions, started talking about what he did. And he was talking about this and how he's selling this program and he started to get off ground, creating his own little company, working with these schools here. And he said, well, have you considered the Middle East where they have the funds to do this and this and that? Well, the next thing you know, 
Cal is connecting Joe with a foundation in Dubai who actually would probably really love to invest in what he's doing and bring that there. That just happened because Joe was willing to have a conversation with someone that he didn't know. Now, if Joe just sat there and said, I'm not going to have a conversation with them, I'm just going to drink my beer and then go back and hang out with my sister and my dad, that wouldn't have happened. Now, do we know where it's going to go? No, we don't know where it's going to go. But enough of those conversations, one of them is going to go somewhere. So there's being in proximity, but there's using that proximity.